That's amazing right there. Really beautiful. Great day for a ride, as always. It's dropped to 91 degrees. Nice and nice and cool in comparison. back to my channel. We're in Lyons today and we're going to be heading up Colorado 7 up to Estes Park and then back down to Lyons. Should be a beautiful ride. Really looking forward to it. Let me show you on the map where we're headed today. We are here in Lyons, Colorado. We'll be taking Highway 7 up here uh, past this turn off to the Peak to Peak Highway and up past Rocky Mountain National Park to Estes Park. We'll then turn back south east on 36 and head back down to Lyons. Not sure you can see my display, but it's 100 degrees. This is the town of Lyons. I'm gonna be going the other direction here. Hey, it's afternoon here in Colorado. As you can see, the storm clouds have rolled in like they do over the mountains. There's the Colorado Highway 7 sign, left lane. That's where we're headed out of Lyons today. When we come back in from Estes Park on 36, we'll come back in right along this road uh, and turn on back down through town. It's a cute little town, pretty quaint. Another great little mountain town here in Colorado. I'm wearing a vest called a Hypercool, spelled with a K try and beat off some of the heat. It works really well as long as you're moving in Colorado. So it's, uh, it's such a dry climate. The evaporation off the vest cools you down pretty good. I'm not quite moving fast enough for it to make a big difference at the moment, so it's pretty hot. Cloud cover will help. Might get a few rain showers. Cool things down a little. And obviously going into the higher elevations will help as well. Colorado Highway 7 that we're on today uh, connects up to Peak to Peak Highway up to Estes Park. It was put in for much the same reason to be able to shuttle people and goods from the towns on the front range up to the gold and silver and other mines in the Colorado mountains back in the early 18, or 1900s. This is rated a G2 road, if I remember correctly, on the Butler motorcycle map. It's a really pretty canyon, really nice ride. St. Vrain Canyon in the Roosevelt National Forest. And, uh, it's really beautiful with this creek right here running down it and the sheer cliff walls. This road is really nice. It looks fairly new. It's really smooth.
I've often seen mountain goats and bighorn sheep in this canyon. Right off the side of the road. We'll keep our eyes open for that. I'm a big fan of pine trees. Uh, so I love canyons like this that have a lot of big pine trees. And pine trees are kind of sticking right up out of the rocks and running right next to the river. It's really, it's really amazing. Amazing views. Beautiful place. As is most of this part of Colorado. Little waterfall right there. Very little, but looks really cool nonetheless. Pretty neat, the river running through that little narrow part of the canyon right there. One of the YouTube channel channels I watch is the Missenden Flyer, and uh, he often gets stuck behind the white vans as he's out riding around, and uh, <laughs> stuck behind the white caravan or RV. That's amazing right there. Really beautiful. Great day for a ride as always. Dropped to 91 degrees, nice and nice and cool in comparison. Uh, generally, Colorado doesn't hit the 100 degree mark uh, very rarely. So today is a certainly an outlier when it comes to standard temperatures in Colorado. Generally in the summer it gets low 90s, upper 80s is usually where we sit down in the valley. Look at this canyon. Beautiful canyon and a great road. If you get a chance to come right it, I recommend it. Hopefully you don't get stuck behind the white RV. I was in India recently and uh, traffic rules there are considerably different than in the United States. This would be a perfect opportunity to ignore the yellow lines and just skirt past some of the traffic. It's expected there. It's not here. Besides being somewhat illegal. <laughs> so I will restrain myself from exercising of the habits I picked up in India while I was riding over there. That was a great trip. I posted a video about it or two. I recommend you watch those in the series there. I certainly had an enjoyable time and got to see some beautiful scenery.
wasn't really planning on going 30 miles an hour up this canyon. Uh, the speed limit being 50. Would have been more enjoyable on these corners. I'm hoping for a passing lane at some point here, but may not get one until we get out of the best, some of these best corners. Oh well, that's the price you pay sometimes. If it's not this white caravan, then it'd probably be another car in front of it. So I'll try and exercise some patience. Look at the river instead. Pretty, really pretty. Well, got through waiting 10 or 15 minutes for the traffic. This road, grooved road, is tricky to ride on. It likes to grab your tires and wander you around, especially at low speeds. Like the machine laying that road down. Quite a process. A lot of trucks lined up, ready to take the turn. That's a lot of trucks lined up. That, uh, that part of seven minus construction is usually really fun. So, still a beautiful canyon. Wasn't quite as fun to ride today. I suppose I should have checked Colorado's construction web page, CDOT to see if they were doing construction on this road before I came up here. This right here is the main junction over to uh, Nederland and Estes Park. Estes Park this way, Nederland that way, 72 that way. Ah, I can finally stretch my legs again. <laughs> Figuratively. There's the speed limit, 55. People are still driving slow, I think. <laughs> it's 82 degrees. Dropped almost 20. And down in the valley, it makes it pretty pleasant. Great view of the mountains. I rode this stretch on my video from Black Hawk to Estes Park. It's part of the Peak to Peak Highway video. Still a beautiful area, beautiful drive, great road. Always good to do a stretch again. Magically, the traffic disappears. It's all behind me now. Beautiful view of Rocky Mountain National Park. Those mountains are something else. Even though it's overcast, 
175 degrees. This is just amazing. Really beautiful ride today. Some amazing scenery. I love seeing the mountains. I could come up here every week. Fourteen thousand two hundred and fifty six feet. Long's Peak right there. People doing a horseback ride there. It's a lot of fun. Nice view of the valley right there. Estes Park, 7,522 feet elevation. Where we're headed. One of the things that uh, I've enjoyed doing is you stay at the Stanley Hotel here in Estes Park where the Stanley Steamer uh, family established. And um, it's also where they filmed some of the movie The Shining. So they have a ghost tour you can go on. Some other things like that. Right up there on the hill is the Stanley Hotel. It's the white structure right up there. Fun place to stay. With the uh, Rocky Mountain National Park right behind it. Up that way. Beautiful area. We'll head east on 36. That's where we're headed now. Nice Jeep in front of me. Got a good lift kit on it. Bigger tires. It's like a fun one to be running around the Colorado mountains. It's a beautiful view of the Estes Park Valley. Oh, that was a nice stop. Took a look at the that's this park from that overlook. It's really pretty. Get around this Jeep here. I'm totally going the speed limit uh, right there, I'm sure. Alright, that was really nice. Good ride up 7 to Estes Park, even though there was a bunch of construction and a lot of traffic. Now we're headed back on 36 down to Lyons again. And uh, a little rain coming down. What a great day for a ride. 78 degrees right now, this part of the canyon. No traffic in front of me at the moment. Just enjoying being out in the Colorado mountains. Fun bike on a fun road. 
Oh no, more construction. <laughs> I didn't know they were doing construction on 36 as well. price you pay I guess to be riding Colorado roads in the summertime. There's a joke in Idaho where I grew up that there are four seasons. Fall, winter, spring, and road construction. Apparently that's true in Colorado too. We have an extra season, fire season. <laughs> no construction yet. Happy about that. I love it when there's no traffic coming or going. Nothing behind me, nothing in front of me. Nothing on the other side of the road. Great. Living in Colorado certainly has some fantastic benefits as far as uh, beautiful places to go ride. Great roads, a lot of nice twisty mountain roads to ride on. And uh, I've been thinking about getting an adventure bike of some sort so that I can not only ride roads but take some trips off into some of the dirt roads and trails around this part of Colorado. I've been researching for a while, trying to figure out what kind of bike to get if I did get one. The type of riding that I would do would be I need to be able to ride a uh, decent distance on pavement. Half an hour, an hour, two hours even uh, to get to some of the trails I'd want to ride. And then I probably wouldn't be doing any super technical trails like single track off-road. Uh, mostly uh, mining and forestry roads that are dirt. Uh, even even two lane dirt roads, one lane dirt road, double track, that kind of thing. So nothing really super technical, although I enjoy doing that. But that wouldn't be the kind of bike that I'd be looking to get because anything that anything that I got that would be I'd feel like would be really enjoyable. On a super technical trail, I probably wouldn't enjoy on the road very much. And I do not want to have to trailer a bike in order to get where I'm going. At least at this point in my life. So, really curious what you'd recommend I get for that particular type of riding. The kind of bikes that are on my radar. Uh, the, obviously the ones that everybody thinks of, the BMW GS series, the 800, 850, the 1200, 1250, depending on how new I decide to go. But I'm a little hesitant to get a BMW bike again, um, especially uh, anyone with higher miles on it. My R1150RT that I have has cost a pretty penny in repairs. Um, considerably more than this Yamaha. So I'm a little hesitant to go with uh, another BMW bike only for that reason. Repairs and maintenance. So I'm, I'm considering uh, it's still in the running but it's probably would have to really think hard and long about that one. The Honda Africa Twin is another one that has caught my eye. Uh, it's a little, might be a little big for what I'm looking for. I've sat on one of those. I haven't ridden one yet, but I've sat on one and 
I'm only 5'8", and I have a 30-inch inseam, and so I could, I could hardly touch the ground on that thing, even on tippy toes, which I'd be a little worried about off in the dirt. That's probably going to be the case with most adventure bikes, uh, only because I am short, and uh, in order to get enough suspension travel to make sense off-road, you got to have a little bit higher seat. The Africa Twin certainly is a, is a nice bike. Another one that I was looking at is the Super Tenor A, Yamaha Super Tenor A, and uh, it's it's another excellent bike. One that's caught my eye recently is the new Tenor A 700. Uh, it's built on with that uh, engine that the. Yamaha engine that they put in the uh, MT-07, which is a which is a really nice bike. I considered getting an MT-07 when I got this MT-09. From some of the research that I've looked at on the internet, it's a it's a pretty good bike off road, all things considered, especially for the price point. It'd be considerably cheaper than many of the others. There's a a Moto Guzzi that, that I thought about. There's a um, Triumph. I think it's, it's the Tiger series that is also off-road. Ducati has an off-road or a, a dual sport bike. Um, all nice bikes. Great bikes. They all have their advantages disadvantages. Um, but I think today if I was going to decide, which I'm not, uh, I'd probably lean towards this, the Tenere. Um, I'm kind of a Yamaha fan. Uh, have been since I was a kid. It's always been between Yamaha and Honda for me. I'm a big BMW fan as well. Um, I don't necessarily want to spend the money on a new GS1250. <laughs> that would be the route that I would take if I ended up getting a BMW would be go new. Um, I probably wouldn't put a ton of miles on it. Uh, I, I'm still really enjoy riding on the road, uh, doing trips like this. But yeah, I think it would be fun to have a, a bike that would I could break up the pattern a little bit and take off road every once in a while. So interested to hear in the comments what you get. Um, I could go with something like a CRF, a Honda CRF 450. That's also on my list. Uh, that's much more dirt focused, but is street legal. Um, so uh, there you go. Curious your thoughts, throw them in the comments. Love to hear what you'd get if you were me. Uh, and then I'll probably ignore it all and just get what I want anyway. But hey, you know, uh, it's always good to get hear people out, get some opinions. Turn back down Broadway where we were when we started the video. Well, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. It was a great ride, even through that construction. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, I'll see you in the next video. It's a turkey. Double rainbow over the city of Boulder. Almost got the full rainbow. Yeah, that's a nice 335. Did I mention I'm a BMW fan? That's a cool old BMW right there. Looks like a 318. That's what, uh, when I was a kid, yeah, it's a 318. When I was a kid, that's what got me interested in the 